next thing we've we've set the dolly up here so we can look down on the table with a 25 mil and then track back and and see the two shot the only problem is with this this gear even though we've got the low angle Romford is that we're starting to get a just marginally high but we're right on the edge of where we should be for the actors eye line we're just a little above their eyes so these are things you've got to really got to think about because when you start using things like dollies and grip and all the rest of it if you can really rationally go through where you're going and, and learn to start using tape measures and know that your gear will give you this will be your minimum lens height and you you go back and you really work it out before you start wasting a lot of people's time and effort because to get all this in and then find it doesn't work is a real real waste of everyone's time and energy Okay, you ready to go? Yes. The actors are brought on set to block through the action. A video split enables the group to watch the framing and see exactly what action they are to light. With the framing set, John then turns his attention to the practical lights. Around about here, we get one four of light off these. The first thing we can do is play with these and take them up to about two. Two. Um, oh, I'm got to be careful. Two seventy. Two seventy. Yeah. And just just watch what happens when you when you, you apply two seventy to these. Now, 260, 270. Now, they run, sometimes they explode, but not very often. And that, that's now got that up to about two. That's max four. Yeah. yeah. What, two there? Uh, no, two, two eight. No, over here, where my hand was. Oh, There's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, right. two. Two. What do you read back on that wall there? Yeah, it's one. One. We have the back of the set lit more strongly than the foreground. Convention says that you keep the background <laughs> down a stop. I think a, a convention's not a good thing to go by in that regard. Uh, in this instant, you'll find that with all that detail back there and the perspective we're getting and the way it's fallen, it'll be rather nice to have that brighter in the background. And this is what I love to do with lighting, is do what we've done and bring in the practicals the way the room would roughly be and then look at it and say now is this working for me or is this working against me and most times it works for you because it, it, it can give you the clue on how the scene would should look realistically it so happens that when you come over the table and come back up here uh, a few things happen you end up on this side of it so we're immediately presented with the possibility of on the foreground people of introducing a pretty strong side source here that they'll believe. You could use a small soft light, which would be out of frame here, and bring that in to key them. The, the next thing is, of course, we do have to get some base fill here, and we're going to have to put some rather diffuse source here. They're the basic simplistic elements that I see within the scene. Now, we've got to build up the whole ambience in this room, I'd say about a stop. But we want it to be non-source light. So, to get this plan underway, we're going to have to produce some sort of a bounce from here to go back into that area. Probably a 4x4 four four on a C-stand up there, and just to keep the floor clear for the actors, bring a spot from over there onto this. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, that, that will then light that area, and she won't throw a shadow, particularly and the fact that she, she'll warm up around here doesn't matter because by then we're over 